All right, it is six o'clock. I'll call this meeting to order. If everyone will stand and uh, say the pledge, pledge with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Now, a moment of silent prayer, please. May 2019 financial reports as well as April. Let's do April 1st. questions that Will had that, or we had that about. Did Jennifer can clear up this meeting. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about it. Right, there's been motions or a second. I'll second. All in favor to approve April minutes? All opposed? <coughs> motion passed. All right, now if you will take a quick look at May. Questions? I will entertain a motion to approve the main uh, financials. $231 on extra payroll last month. Not counting Jimmy and. Will be Huh? Helen. No, not counting you and. Uh, Jimmy Helms. Is the only ones I didn't count. Okay. Jimmy Helm, Jordan, and Leanne was $3,231 in Jordan. Hey, Lynn got her hours raised. Jordan got his hours raised. But to 20 hours a week, right? So 
the way I had it figured <coughs> on the new say I'm sorry, Dad. Go ahead. Didn't you say though if he got raised 20 hours a week, he would put on uh, the retirement plan? If he gets over so many hours a month, he's going to have more to pay retirement on him. What is it, anything over 99? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with 20 hours a week, we'd be pushing it on a five-week month. He's averaging How about 20, 20, 25 a week. 19 and a half hours. That'd keep you longer. Okay. Unless she's going to pay your time, then that's fine too. It's a matter of hospitals. Uh, Why are you shaking your head? If he works 20 hours a week, that's only 80 hours a month. The threshold is 100. Yeah. I mean, he's averaging between yeah. 20 and 25. So is, is he getting over the 99? Mm -hmm. Okay. Not yet. But with Leanne's checks on here, mm -hmm. she got two checks, so twice a month, and it was a thousand fifty one oh two, and if she got twenty hours a week, that's thirteen dollars an hour. Average is thirteen dollars an hour, and we only was it a pair of ten? Yeah, so it's ten. So I'll stop pulling her time sheets for you. Okay. And Joe's got $180 worth of mileage. You got mileage sheets, just I guess, on what all that's for? Yes, I turned her a bit of it in too to get her. She has to have it before she can print out the checks. Is it 58 cents a mile? Or 50? Yep. 58. Probably less than that. They, they adjust that. Mm -hmm. What every three months or something? No, I don't know how often they adjust it. Wow, it was point fifty three. Yeah, what is it? this year? Is yeah. Jim's check going to be split? Yes, yeah. you'll see. You'll see it in next month for this month. Okay, good. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was saying the sewer plant. Yeah, a lot of good. I think they just do it once a year. Really? I think it's what it is. You can read it there. No, last update, we got your TLC. And they That's what this is. That's what she goes by. Cause we, we, we did look it up a while back, and that's. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking they adjusted it every so so often. I can't remember how. Long. The reason I said that is because this state starts out and says the mileage reimbursement rates for 2019 are as follows. So I assume it just wants them to be here. And is some of that those kick the meetings that you got to? Um, yeah, some of the kick the meetings. I had to go to uh, an actual KLC training event. Um, I've had to go to Frankfurt <coughs> for a meeting with DLG over the sewer expansion. Um, I mean, it's. There have been several pretty long trips. I haven't had to go to Lexington yet, but I've had a couple of meetings actually in Frankfurt um, and Kipta and stuff like that. Um, what are the code enforcement reimbursements? Uh. First page, uh, check number 2589. Gas. Okay. Is it 7250? Uh, no, 2589, the check was for. That's my gas. 264.38. Yes. That's what it says. Yes. But it's a. Uh, here. Change down for the enforcement reimbursement. It's a 
Was that mileage? Not that I shouldn't be. You did add my paycheck and my mileage together one time. Yeah, this was just for 20. I'll have to pull it and look and see. And also the last check 2562 and 2601 were written the same day for the same amount. Yeah, yeah. I see right here. Right at the bottom. 1790 and 1790. Law enforcement, and then knowledge, and then COVID enforcement. Mm -hmm. I have to look and see if that was a mistake or something. Because it's, yeah, it's the same day, two different checks. Well, I mean, Jim knows he got it. I've only got two reimbursements on uh, miles twice since I've been here. But I went 30 days the first time, then I got a week, and I haven't turned in my next 30 days yet. Well, this one says payroll. Yeah. How much is it? 11790. 117? Yes, yeah. sir. That's probably right. That's payroll. Yeah, I've been showing two different check numbers on the same day for the same amount. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -uh. I'm gonna yeah, 1179 and then the same day, 1179. That has to be something. 19, 19 huh? I never got it. 31st, it's got to be a mistake or something. Mistake, though. Right? Right. Is there a flat rate ever set for that or just according to what you go? Are we, are we setting up a flat rate here for you or just you? For what? For what you are traveling. I get the same mileage as everybody else. I get 58 cents a mile. Okay. And some days I get 10 miles, some days I get 15. Okay. I didn't know what you allow a certain flat rate a month or what? Yeah. There, I, there, on this next one, I'm turning in 30, 30 miles. We're going to pick up a meteor in Carroll. Okay. Blow the city. And if I get called out to help the server at night, stuff like that, and begin to my cover for them, that's where I get my extra hour. In. And I've been called out four times the last two weeks for the COVID, COVID course. Okay. I didn't know what to ask. You know, you only get 10 hours, but it's getting into the point of being calling me out on and things like that. You know, I don't know what else to do. I can't keep it in low. And right now, I work a whole solid week better than 50 hours turned in right at 14 hours. Yeah, but you drive through Bedford, it don't take an hour to drive through Bedford. No. And look. No. No. Yeah. I mean, but I'm just saying, I mean, I mean nothing against you, buddy. Get you. Okay, see, is it? No, once you drive through, you give that warning, you don't have to go back for seven days. Yeah. You don't have to go and monitor the progress. You don't have to monitor the progress? The progress. Oh. You know, once you get back, hey, you got to do it. You don't have to go back for seven days. And then if they haven't done it, Give them their citation and be done. I just want to walk down on it. Alright. Just for 5390, check 2601, 5319, check 2562, it was the same, 130, so 
And all of Jordan's will come out of the city. Yes. All of Jordan's. Yeah. yeah. Only Jim. That's the Right, that's the way I did it. Yeah. I will entertain a motion to approve minutes if there's no more questions. The financial, who's second the financial? Yeah. I got, I got a question. What you were saying, how do you want me to do this on the Bible site before we go to Carl? Thought you me? Mileage. Yeah, that's what you were talking about. I didn't say anything about mileage. So what, are you, what, are you, what, are you, what are you trying to say? I'm just saying if you go up there, you say you got to get this grass in seven days. Yeah. You don't have to go up there every day and monitor it. Well, I, that's all I was saying. <clears throat> you know what I mean? You don't got to monitor them day and charge the city because. You wait seven days, go back for the eight done, write a ticket, and you go. So I might as well just sit home five days a week and go out one after another. Well, I mean, dude. Joe, uh, I'll come by tomorrow to collect what's owed to me. I'm sorry I'm asking right now. <laughs> You're kidding me. No, sir. Because of what I said? Everybody thinks this is just a simple, easy job. It's not a simple, I know, and you do a good job. But I've told you before, don't. I mean, if you abuse it, it's not going to last. I don't want to see it. All right. Y'all have not seen it. All right. Thank you. 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 All right, can I get a second on the financials for May? I'll second. All in favor of approval? All opposed? All right. No, I didn't either. I'm just asking because that was a double. I didn't. Okay, All right. Uh, now we move on to the May minutes, the meeting minutes. Motion to approve the minutes for May. May motion. Anyone want to second? I'll second. All in favor of approval? All opposed? <coughs> All right, now we move on to commissioner reports, and we will start with uh, Ms. Tammy Lighter Scott. Um, Harold brought to my attention that there's an ash tree on the back side behind where uh, the gazebo is, that lawn there. On the other side of the fence there's a dead tree on that person's property and uh, Harold was thinking that it may fall on the stones. I don't know who lives in that property. Do you? There behind the cemetery? Well, Chandler really went for the house up there from it. John Chandler. But it's on their property, so. It's who belongs to that property, though. It's not ours to take down, so I don't know what we can do about that right now. Um, Is it leaning over? No, it's just dead. It's a 
ash tree, it's dead, and they know it's going to fall within a year's time. Right. Yeah. And uh, it it's going to, it could fall on us. You have know. to wait and take care of it after it's packed. Yeah. So we can't go on their property and cut it unless maybe we talk to them and ask them if we can get permission to do it. Uh, but as far as it being on the property, we can't touch it. I'd like to say something to Debbie Chandler on that. Because uh, she's a good friend, so she might, they might take care first it. ask them if you want know, yeah. to take it out. It, it could fall on us, and it could cause a lot of damage to the stones on that. It may be worth their while to go yeah. ahead and take yeah. it down before something like that happens. Yeah, it's five or six of stones that could be damaged. And we had any luck on the light out at the... And I guess it's a muddy mess. Everything's a muddy mess. <laughs> yeah. It just that you had anything else to report, Tammy? No, I don't think so. I think that's it. All uh, right, let's move to streets and sidewalks with Mr. Will McCoy. Uh, Jimmy told me he's been working on some potholes. Uh, other than that, it's just been raining and it's going to get worse. And... Now, I did notice back there on West Street, there were some holes that had gravel in them. And when I went back through there, so much rain has washed the gravel up out of the potholes in the middle of the road. That's more than Okay. Until they get so those repaired, they've been maintaining those. Uh, I was talking to Tammy about the sidewalk, about on this side of her. It's all tore up, one portion of it needs to be replaced. But that's in the ordinance. We'll do that when we get the money. <laughs> Whatever they cost. Which, yeah. Um, any other thing that you need to discuss, Will, as far as streets and sidewalks? All right, we will move on to sanitation, Mr. Harold Green. Well, I talked to the man this morning, drives the truck, said everything was fine, but he, he was a little late, but the weather was bad. So I, I tell you, he's amazing. The guy does such a good job. Yeah, he, he, he does a great job. Never complains. No, he doesn't. That's right. So everything's great for that, he said. All right, sir. Thank you. Uh, now we move on to wastewater operations with Gary Johnson. Jim, I mean, we, uh, we need a colony. What? A colony. It's a grinder pump at the head of the plant works. Huh. And it will shred those bags up to where he don't have to go out that boat three times a day and clean them. Um, is there this a... will grind that up in the air register. <coughs> um, is there, have y'all got a price together on all that? No, we, well, we could look at it, you know, I mean, because of other matter on the concrete, we will have to have a housing with the pump, with the motor, and we have to still look at that. But that would save him a lot of hours on out there, dangers in that polluted water fixing holes. Um, well, I mean, really, you can't take action on that until we get the estimate of everything it's right. going to cost exactly. to do it. Exactly. And yeah. then once you get that, bring it back and do right. a right. presentation. I just want to bring it up and say that's what we're looking to. That's what we're looking to. And, you know, we'll just take it from back. I have a question. Generator. Yeah. Did y'all get it? Get a new boat. Uh, the boat is taller than me. Take a picture showing it's taller than me. The boat we did go get, and the boat has helped tremendously. Uh, it, oh it, yeah. We can actually get in there and work on them, but I'm getting tired of using that boat. We're about to wear it out already. He can leave over uh, the, foot the, the boat generator. I did not spend half the money you all allotted to spend. I'm sorry. I tried. Oh, that's okay. I oh, thank you. We went up there, and we got up there, there was some issues with the one that we were getting. It wouldn't mount to the trailer without drilling holes in the frame, and they didn't want to do that. Make a long story short, we got one, uh, it's a 30 kV generator. Uh, we bought it for $4,500, as is, and 
we brought it back. We had to put oil in it, all the filters, fuel in it, everything like that. Uh, so we went to Napa and got all the parts to do it. And I'm, I don't know if you've got a bill on it yet or not, but it's not that. It's not near as what this we saved on it. And uh, I have to give this credit to Jordan because uh, as far as the diesel motor, I took, I, I took care of that part. As far as all this military stuff, yeah, Jordan. He, that's his baby. Right. He dealt with them when he was in service. He knew what he was doing. Exactly. There's the outcome of it right there. That light's plugged into the generator. It is running. And you've got $4,500 plus whatever we owe. <coughs> And I'm, once we get everything done on it, it's going to be put in the uh, secondary barn down there, and I hope it never comes back out. Uh, we are going to write up a maintenance procedure on it. But if we do, it's that. We're going to start it up and run it once a month uh, on a maintenance schedule. And other than that, I hope we never have to use it. But there it is. Uh, as far as the rain, all the rain we've had, uh, if we get any rain at all tonight, we're probably going to run over into the games. They're within an inch right at the bottom, and within an inch from going over the bank right now. Yeah. It's been there all day. We're yeah. running right at 500 gallons of discharge. Yeah, they're calling for heavy rain. We can't put out no more. Uh, That's all we need. As you can imagine, almost every night this week, we've been called out. And last week, we've been called out. Uh, that was one thing where uh, Jimmy had some hours. Last week, Jordan was at work. I got called out. I had to go down in that sump at number three. Uh, talked to Joe, we decided we'd get Jimmy to help us, and I'm sure he charged for it. Uh, that was probably one of the things. And uh, right now, if we get any more rain, we're in trouble, but everybody in the state is. Since he stormed out of here, does he still work down there? His boy, I mean, that is your all's decision. No, I mean, I think, no, he does to me. I mean, just, what? That was a heated moment. <clears throat> that is your all's decision. That's between you all well, and him. Uh, I will try to contact him and talk with him. Yeah. I did not mean to make him mad. I just meant. I don't think he's abusing it, really. I mean, it's working. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, I guess I'm now I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. But you know, he he goes out there and he writes somebody tell him you gotta get this cleaned up. <coughs> and they do happen. And then he comes back out there where he goes past, he said, you know, this is your seven days, you gotta get the rest of that mode. And I don't know how I want to put it. I mean, I don't think he's abused it because he's constantly in contact with me. He calls me out. I go out and look at things with him. Um, he, he's, I mean, I have to say he's been doing a really good job. He has a job at it. And it's getting cleaned up. Yeah. It's getting cleaned up and it's looking a whole and lot better. And all the money spend, I think, you know, lately, it has been working. I yeah. really do. The only thing of me is you can't tell somebody to mow and they go by every day and look at it. And yeah, you, yeah, you can. Yeah. You can? Yeah. If, if you wait a week to go back, if they mowed it on the day after you came, you it's going to be done ready again. You get that notice, so. So you got seven <coughs> days to do it. You don't need to go back for seven days. Well, what if they did it the day after you went and it rained for three days? When you go back the next time, it won't look like they did anything. <laughs> yeah, okay. They ain't been doing well, maybe, uh, <laughs> I mean, I might have got a little bit. I don't know. You just asked some question. I mean, I didn't mean to make it bad. I mean, it was just a question. I mean, it, it, you're, yeah, that's your wife right asked question. I mean, I'm looking at the city. Yeah. I think I've got to start it. But I understand, but I, he's contacted me, he comes to my house, gets me out of the house and talks to me about what he's doing, right. why he's got to run back and forth. Um, some people he can't catch. He has to go back several times um, to get in touch with them. Uh, he has to 
run the PVA and then back out there to try to find out who actually owns that. He tries to contact the homeowners, the, the or the tenants or the landlords. And uh, I mean, I don't. I mean, think we got a full used. working enforcement board now. Yep. And I just hate it because I don't, don't go back to square it. one. Don't mess with it. But now here we are. I hope he reconsiders. I, know I think you know, he just spoiled the moment. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go back to square one because it was. I feel bad. I. I should have. I don't mean to make I should have spoke up, Gary. You should have. I wish you would have. I do too. <laughs> well, all right. So. Didn't mean nothing by it. I mean, it's nothing. No, just, I didn't mean just. That. I did not mean to just ask him a question. No, I know. It's well, just miscommunication. It's just wrong. Don't know unless you ask. You know, that's the way it works. All right, do you have anything else to report, Mr. Johnson? That's it. All right, we'll move on to some old business. We got uh, <coughs> the second reading of the Code of Ethics Ordinance, or the okay. summary. Yep. Uh, an ordinance amending the City of Bedford Ordinance 4, Series 1991, which establishes a code of ethical conduct applicable to officers and employees of the city. Summary. <coughs> the ordinance amends the prior ethics ordinance to allow the City of Bedford to meet the standards to become a certified City of Ethics. Certification under the Kentucky League of Cities program recognizes that city officials have adopted principles and procedures that offer guidance on ethical issues and a mechanism to resolve complaints at the local level. The program also increases public trust and confidence in the city's government. The ordinance has been amended by the addition of a section on findings which articulates the value of ethics, their importance in the running of local government, and the increase in the public's confidence in its local government, which ethical processes and procedures are adopted. The amended ordinance expands upon the purpose and authority of the ethics ordinance, the original ethics ordinance. The amended ordinance includes additional definitions. The ordinance has been amended to expand upon the rules surrounding conflicts of interest in general, and in contracts with the city specifically. The amended ordinance adds a section on incompatible offices which outlines which officers cannot be held by the same person. The ordinance is amended to add a section explaining when an officer or employee must withdraw from participating in his or her job due to conflicts of interest. The section of the ordinance on receipt of gifts changes the amount of a gift an official or employee may accept from under $100 to no amount whatsoever. The amended ordinance prohibits any use whatsoever of city property for personal use. The amended ordinance prohibits nepotism. The amended ordinance prohibits a city official or employee of the city from representing other interests before the city. The ordinance is amended to expand on the misuse of confidential information. The amended ordinance prohibits political solicitation by officials or, under, or employees of underlings and prohibits officials and employees from conducting political solicitation during working hours. The amended ordinance prohibits use of the government of a government office to reward political friends. The amended ordinance prohibits an official or employee from engaging in any outside employment which results in a conflict of interest with his or her municipal duties. The amended ordinance prohibits an official or employee from representing an interest before the city for one year after the end of his or her employment with the city. The ordinance is amended to put limits on the acceptance of fees in honoraria and endorsements. The amended ordinance prohibits officials and employees from encouraging others to violate the ordinance and orders them to report any violations of which they are aware to the ethics board. It also prohibits falsely reporting incidents. The amended ordinance requires all <coughs> elected officers and members of city boards and commissions to attend all meetings. It is a violation of the code to miss more than one-third of scheduled meetings. The amended ordinance adds policies for both the use of social media, for the use of social media and email, social media and email. The amended ordinance expands upon the, the existing financial disclosure requirements and sets out how and when to file statements, the form of the statement, the order, the control and maintenance of the financial statements, the contents of said statements, and what constitutes non-compliance. The amended ordinance creates an ethics board to enforce the provisions of the ethics ordinance. It sets forth membership requirements and term limits. It sets out how to conduct meetings, the powers and duties of the board, training and education of board members, filing an investigation of complaints and hearing and appeal procedures. 
The ordinance gives the ethics board the power to issue advisory opinions, and it prohibits reprisals against people who disclose violations. Any person who violates a provision of this ordinance shall, upon conviction thereof, be subject to a fine of not more than $1,000. The city shall have the right to recover the fine, any fines in a civil action in the nature of debt if the offender fails to pay the penalty within a prescribed period of time. This summary is made pursuant to the authority of KRS 83A.060, parens 9, close parens, which allows the city to prepare for publication a summary of an ordinance in lieu of the publication of the full <laughs> ordinance itself. The ordinance becomes effective 90 days after the final reading and publication. The full text of this ordinance is on file in the office of the clerk for the city of Bedford, where it may be inspected and introduced and read publicly the first time, April 16, 2019. And today, this uh, publicly read the second time, June 17. All right, I'll entertain the motion to approve. Make a motion. Yeah, I'll second. Second. Um, okay, then this, we need to go to a roll call vote by voice. So we will start with Gary Johnson. Yes or no? You want to approve it? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Will? Yes. Tammy? Yes. And I say yes. Motion passes. And then um, there is a meeting, the ethics training on August 28th. So people may want to put that, I believe that's mandatory, isn't it? Yeah, it's at 6 p.m. August 28th uh, here for the ethics training. She's yeah, for the ethics to, training. Yeah. Miss Hilda, you're still on the board, aren't you, on that? And Kenny Payton and Sue Joyce. I talked to Sue Joyce. She wants to be removed from the board. So we need a recommendation for someone else that would like to be on the board. You have to meet once a year and uh, go over what has gone through the year and make sure that you are judging us and keeping us in control. So if you, if you know of anybody, if anybody knows of anybody that would recommend to be on the ethics board, it's not a big deal. Just once a year you have to meet and go over the things we've done. And you, what did they set a date? Yeah, you know, I put it as you suggested. I said in January, I think, uh, just before the end, January 1, I think. And we can change June it. first. Oh, June 1st, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, June, coming January yes. 1st. Right, that's what you were saying, June. So it's right before the end of the fiscal yeah, year. Yeah, because that be June 1st for yes. the ethics board meeting. Um, that way, it's at the end of our fiscal year. And you can, if you have any questions for that year, you can propose them that we change for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, I talked to Kenny and told him about the training, but I couldn't really get a straight answer out of him whether he was still going to do it or not. He put the date on his phone, so I'm thinking he's still going to do it. But Miss Joyce said that she did not want to do it anymore. And we have to have a three-member board, so we have to find someone else to appoint to the board. And uh, one other thing, this is, this is something that Jim and Jennifer go to as well, isn't it? As um, yes, all city employees. It would be all city employees, anybody that works with us, um, they all need to be here for it. Okay. Um, the ethics board, we're having that training, y'all need to be here. Um, we all need to be here. Jordan, uh, the Jimmys, uh, Leanne, anybody that works with us needs to be at this thing for this effort. What was the date on that again? I'm sorry? What was the date on that again? The 28th, August, August 28th. 28th at 6 p.m. I think it's a Wednesday. I think Jordan's on the floor. I might be too. Because that's the only time that, that's the only time that their trainer could get here. I think that's the day he's going to down there that they're in the Asian All right, let's move on. Uh, I have a second reading of the sidewalk ordinance. An ordinance concerning the repair and replacement of sidewalks. Whereas the city of Bedford has sidewalks within the city limits and whereas the sidewalks suffer both ordinary wear and tear and other damage, 
and whereas a plan for the repair and replacement of sidewalks is necessary to maintain the quality of the sidewalks, protect the city from liability, and facilitate travel throughout the city, now therefore be it ordained by the City Commission of the City of Bedford, Kentucky as follows. Section 1, responsibility for the repair and replacement of sidewalks. As city sidewalks are considered part of the city streets that are reserved for pedestrians, the repair and or replacement of sidewalks within the city falls under the authority of the city commission to maintain. It is neither possible for a city to maintain perfect sidewalks, nor does the law impose this standard. Claims against the city for sidewalk repairs and replacement shall be reviewed under the Claims Against Local Governments Act, KRS 65.2000, um, etc. And then section two, sidewalk committee. A city sidewalk committee is hereby created consisting of three members. One member shall be the city commissioner in charge of streets and sidewalks. The committee shall review all sidewalks within the city limits at least once every calendar year and shall create a list and a map of all repairs and replacements and or replacements to be made. The committee shall estimate the cost to make the repairs replacements. The committee shall prioritize the list and shall submit an up-to-date copy to the full city commission at least once each calendar year. The sidewalk committee shall be responsible for determining whether the damage to the sidewalk has been incurred by the abutting uh, property owner or not. The committee shall pass on to the city commission all information regarding the responsibility for costs of repair slash replacements, costs to be borne by the city. The cost of the labor to repair and or replace the sidewalk shall be the responsible of the city, responsibility of the city, unless the cause of the damage is the fault of a property owner abutting the sidewalk. The city commission shall send the property owner a letter advising of the required repairs, the schedule for repairs, the estimated cost to the property owner once the commission has determined a repair replacement is to be made. The city shall repair, replace all damaged sidewalks as funds and time allow. In section four, the cost to be borne by the property owner. The cost of the materials to repair and or replace the sidewalk shall be the responsibility of the owner of the property abutting the sidewalk. Where two or more properties abut the sidewalk in question, the cost will be distributed according to the ratio of the amount of sidewalk abutting each individual property. If the property owner is determined to be responsible for the damage, the property owner shall be responsible for both the cost of the labor and material. <coughs> the city shall bill the abutting property owner for all repairs replacements if the property owner has been found to be responsible for the damage. The city shall bill the property owner for the materials only if the property owner is not found responsible. The city may take a lien on the property of the abutting owner in the process in the amount of the expenses incurred if the property owner does not reimburse the city or the city may place an assessment on the property tax bill of the abutting property owner to collect the amount owed to the city. Date of first reading, April 16th, second reading. And I'll entertain a motion to approve this. So I'll second it. Um, and we need to go around and do roll call vote again. Mr. Johnson, how do you vote yes or no to approve this? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Will? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. And I approve also. Okay, that's old business. Now we move to new business. Um, we did, uh, I imagine you're, the people who've been here before know about this reverse, reverse salt auction. It's the same as last year. Yeah, it's the same as last year. It's 25 a ton. It'll be $1,845. Yeah, if we get our salt now for the roads for winter, it's a lot cheaper. Did we use all what we got last year? Is there some left? There is. Uh, didn't use very little, did you, Jim? Oh, yeah, we used a lot. We did. Uh, there is some left exactly. I don't know. I'll be quite honest. I really don't care uh, because if I drive out there and I get loaded and I leave and I go put it down, I don't have to go back to down the plant, cut base, climb up on the truck. If, uh, if they, if they come there. out a ton or two ahead, I personally don't care. What you got left though was a plus. Just 
they don't tell me I'm all, I really don't care what's going on. Where do we purchase our salt? Compass, Compass minerals. I'll make the motion to make the motion to approve. Yeah. Do we have a second? All in favor? All opposed? And that's accepted. All right, the uh, next thing on the list is discuss the cemetery cremation. All right, this is the deal with the one we talked about last, or y'all talked about I wasn't here. Yeah. I talked to Jay. It's for a Don Proctor. He's been in the ground for 10 years. The family's wanting to dig it up. Jay says he, there's no laws for it. He said they're allowed to do it. He said best advice would be to charge them the $300. We go out there, dig it up, clean it off, and hand it over to Tambley and Eckler and let them do what they want to with it. He said, it, it means it's a crematory. He said, it, on the crematory, it doesn't show that there, 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 there's a body and it's, this, where it's in the cemetery or it's here. So Jay said he doesn't see an issue with letting them do it. And I talked to him, he said, the only thing is you have to have uh, the cemetery director or the funeral director out there at all times while it's being exhumed and you have to give the families the opportunity to be there when it's exempt. And he said, that's basically, he said, unless, um, he said, you can even move a body. Um, as long as it stays within the confinements of that cemetery, you do not need a court order. But if you're exhuming a body from this cemetery to take it, put in Carrollton Cemetery, you have to go through courts and get a court order to do it. But he said, if this, there's no court orders, they just have to be out there to watch the process, make sure everything's done properly. Would that would they agree to that? That's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. That's right. They're yeah. agreeing to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, can I get someone to make a motion if you want to let them? So move? how we're going to charge them three hundred dollars? I can just put that in, and we won't charge you to go out and do that or yeah. anything. Yeah, all the calls falls upon them. No, they'll pay the city. The city will go out there and dig it up. Why not? So say, yeah. the, all the calls falls on yeah. them. Yeah. They pay us to go do it. Yeah. We're not out anything. Can I ask a question about the grave digger while we're on this subject? Mm -hmm. If he charges five hundred and fifty dollars, how much do we get paid from the funeral home for him? Three fifty. He charges three fifty. Family. Yeah. yeah. We had a five fifty. It was five fifty. Was it for two? Was it for two or one? Mm. Was it the Sunday one? Is that when he has to bring his yeah. equipment in? Yeah. So, so it's probably when it's something he had to bring in, or it was a Sunday <coughs> that we didn't know about. <coughs> but then we only deposited a hundred of that. No, so then yeah, no, seven hundred is what we get for open closing. Hundred would be a location fee if you're seeing that on there. Well, we've already went through the financials, but that's not what's on here. When it concerns the cemetery, it was for an opening and closing. It's got a hundred, and a cremation was three hundred. The hundred is the location fee, and the cremation is for three hundred. I think that more will be cremated down the road what they have been. It's cheaper. It's cheaper than it's done. It was a deposit. The hundred was a deposit for location fee. It was deposited in. But it says open and closing, so. Yeah, you look like hands. Yeah, she was in for open and closing. <laughs> open and closing seven. So we're missing that deposit somewhere? Mm -hmm. It was a deposit for $100 for a location fee. So it should have been location fee, not open and closing. If we didn't have any open and closing until this month. You'll see like three or four. Well, why do we pay Stanley Clark $550? Was it for the previous month? $530. Yeah, I'll pull out his records and show it to you. So we should have a $700 deposit from April's. Oh, yeah. 
not not April, no, May. And you see it in June. Yeah, we'll have to look at that because it's not making any sense at all. Okay. We'll mark it. Okay. All right, so now can I get a motion to approve them removing this cremation? Um, second. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Motion passes. All right, now we move on to the first reading of fiscal year 2019-2020 budget. Do you have a, yeah, just because you know the numbers. I, I got a copy of it. Do you mind reading it, Jennifer, just to see? Or if I can just look at it, you know. The numbers. You can just look at it and see the difference in it. You want to read it, do we? Give everybody a copy yeah, of the budget. Yeah, everybody has a copy of it. This week. question I have right off the bat is uh, the way it looks, uh, last year's payroll expenses uh, was budgeted at uh, $70,000 mm -hmm. and we only increased that by $2,000 and we just increased Jordan and Leanne's amount of hours. It's kind of over anyway. Okay. As long as we have enough plotted to cover. I just want to right. make sure. Yeah. That yeah, there was excess left. Yeah, we just excess. added a little excess to make sure cause of okay. adding the extra hours for people. All right. That was just my main concern. Right? road aid yeah um to my knowledge no we still have not received that 7500 you know any mm -hmm. information on that you for you sent in no it's been sent in i don't know anything else i'll have a look at them we'll try it tomorrow because um, yeah, we sent the paperwork jennifer got all the paperwork i can't say we she did um she got everything she sent it in to them and now it's on her court and we're waiting to get here yeah. something back okay. to her because I do know I got a report, they were holding 7,500, which it may be more now. But when I got the report, they were holding 7,500 until we get this taken care of. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept that as the budget. For the budget has to have two reviews. Oh, okay. okay. So that was the first yeah, we're just bypassing reading, and it don't have to be voted on now, but the second uh, reading it will have to be voted on. All right, if everybody's ready, we move on to the next thing. Um, and this is accept a proposal for the sewer expansion funding. It uh, is through KIA to accept them working with us to do it. Um, it's nothing binding, it's uh, no obligation. Just It's just telling them, yes, we were interested in it so they can start on their end on the paperwork because there's a lot of paperwork. I think before we do that, we've got to come up with an audit. Well, you've got to, I mean, if, I mean it's worth if it. If we don't get the audits, it's all dead anyway. And the trouble we've been having, I think, I mean, we're waiting around. It's costing this money anyway. It's costing time. We get the state to come in and do it and forget it. Pay them extra and because. But, but the state said the only way they will do a city is if we have actual verifiable black and white proof that there's something funny going on. And I have a guy who have been talking to today. It's Greg Jackson out of Blue Company from Louisville. I sent him all the information today, and he said he's got a meeting 
at the end of the week, and he would let me know first thing Monday when they could be out here. Let the state for, and will give do, support to the state will do the counties, but they will not come out and do a city unless there's actual verifiable proof or something funny going on. Then they said they will come out and do it, but they charge like three times what a normal auditor does. So, I mean, we don't have any. We haven't seen anything in three years, have we? The only they, thing we've got is an unfinished one. No, right. that is finished. Uh, the thing is, that is a finished one. Um, KIA says it is not. <coughs> He said it was. Well, it states. Finished. I've got it right here, and it states right in the front. Mm. Incomplete. Incomplete audit. This is just. Uh, yeah, KIA said it's clear from what was said in there, mm -hmm. and they will not accept that as a completed audit. We've got it here somewhere. But yeah, it's it says. <laughs> the only thing is, if it shows a vast improvement from 17 to 18. And then they'll know we were just changing the guard and stuff. And because I think that one completed. But 18, 18 is going to have to show a vast improvement over mm -hmm. what that's got to be. Yeah. Um, yeah, right here on the front page, it's a disclaimer. Because of the significance of the matters described in the basis, basis for disclaimer, we have not been able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to provide a basis for an audit opinion. So it's not complete as far as, I mean, that other auditor may think so, but it states that it isn't. I mean, yeah, but with this accept, accepting of the proposal, that's so they can get started on their end, on their paperwork, but they don't want to start doing all the paperwork and then they change their mind and say, no, nah, we're not interested. But this year it's completely contingent on, uh, uh, the surveys, the audits, and the county getting a mandatory ordinance for hookup. So if one of those three things fail, well, two of the three things, if we can't supply the audit and we don't get the ordinance for the sewer uh, for mandatory hookup, we're done. The KIA will drop it. They will not get us the loan. Well, I was confused last night in this meeting anyway. Was the CDBG grant 100% or is it a matching? No. To get a CDBG grant, you have to have matching funds from somewhere. So we're going to borrow the money to match those funds? Yeah, well, yes, in a way. Just the way it's set up, uh, CDBG, it's just take $2 million for math purposes. It's close enough. Uh, the project is $2 million. KIA will finance the whole thing for us right now, the whole $2 million. But CDBG is going to step in there and say, we'll pay a million of this for you at free, no cost. So that drops it to a million. Well, with KIA right now, the offer that they are giving us is a 50% uh, forgivable amount. So out of that million that we still have to pay, we only have to pay 500000 because they automatically, whatever half they give us, they forget it's half of it's forgiven, 50% forgiveness. And plus, on top of that, KIA is only offering a 1% interest on this right now. Um, they said they can't guarantee next year it would be the same. Said next year, if we go do the same thing next year and try to wrap this through, it may be 10% interest. But as of right now, this is an extremely good offer but it's all contingent on the things we got to get done right now. And what's, what's the deadline? We have 60 days from June 5th. June 5th is when they sent me the acceptance papers. Um, and uh, that it's, I'm going to blame it on that auditor. We talked to that one auditor. And he said, yeah, no problem. And he said, this shouldn't be a problem at all. I can have this audit done for you in 60 days, have it back to you and they'd be ready to go. For three weeks, we waited and waited and waited. Well, then they sent Jennifer, called Jennifer, and sent her a little note. They never even opened up her packets. They just stuck it back in a box and shipped them back to us. Said, well, it's gonna be at least two months before we can touch it. So we wasted three weeks 
on this auditor waiting for him to tell us what we need to do on this audit and he never even opened the packets he just sent them back to us so now we're having to scramble to find another oh he did send a list of auditors mm -hmm. of CPAs and Jennifer has called about 14 or 20 or how many of us on that list and uh, we are waiting to hear back from them to see if they feel they can get it done in time but this guy was positive he could do it. Yeah, no problem, nor he, he even told me, he said, if anybody said anything, you give them my name that I'm working on. And uh, I said, all right. And then he never even opened the papers that she sent to him. He put them back in the box and shipped them right back. Jim, you got a question? Oh, I just want to add something, and uh, I don't know how to explain it, but this project that he was here last night talking about, they call it an expansion, but a lot of things are thrown into that expansion that started out here before my time and back when Rita was around and they put in for pop upgrades and all this stuff and it's all been combined in one. It's been pushed through the system. It's getting close. I hate for you all to vote to kill it out now. Even if you don't get your audits and stuff done. It's still there. All this public meetings and everything that they've already done, those boxes are already checked off. So next year, when it comes back around, well, you'd probably be in good shape then, and that project is still active. Yeah, I mean, we probably... Not, you know, if we kill it, we start back to, I don't know, 2008, 2009, whenever y'all first started. We don't want to have to climb that ladder again. Yeah, I know, I mean, we're pushing it, we're in a rush, we're in a bad right now to get this done in a 60 day time period. And the reason that I'm pushing so hard is that 1% interest. Because how next year- How much is, uh, are we gonna be, even at $500,000, how long a loan is this? And 30 years. How long? 30. So we're talking what, $2,500 a month? $2,200 a month? <laughs> Figuring that up with. But I mean, we've got to make the system. The main reason. And I know we need all this, but 24 customers aren't going to do it to make help us pay it. So no, I mean, I'd, I'm not I mean, going to kill it. Now is $2, a month How much of a gamble is that? Well, well, what? Right now we have. We're paying $2,600 a month right now on the loan of the current. But it's real close to being paid off, but we, we are paying that out each month right now. It's supposed to be paid off this year, wasn't it? No, yeah. this year, it's two close. years. But uh, right now, you can ask Jimmy, on station one and on station three, we're put in back in 81, 85, something like that. Um, the pumps that are in them, they do not even make anymore. They do not have parts for them. The parts cannot be found, they're obsolete. Um, this, expansion upgrade will completely replace those two pumping stations with updated all new equipment because right now if pump station one goes bad pump station three goes bad we're in big trouble because you can't get pumps for it and there's no pumps you can't just go buy a pump and match it up you have to run all new piping you got to completely reset the whole thing up and right now we can't fix either one of them because you can't get parts for them we're just Jimmy's holding them together with duct tape and spit right now and we've got our fingers crossed that they don't go down. And that's what part of this is for, is to upgrade and renew those pump stations. You said there'd be 24 customers added to it, is that what you said? Yeah, that's what they was talking about last night. 24 customers would be added on. I mean, and I, that, that is what was originally started going that route for the expansion, but I am a whole lot more interested in these two pump stations that we got that we can't fix. In other words, we're out with FEMA on getting any money from them. Is that right? No, FEMA has nothing to do with this. They don't have nothing to do with the pump station. This is a completely different animal. And then we supposed to get some money from FEMA though, wasn't it? On this flood we had? Um, possibly sent all the paperwork in to our knowledge the way we read the documents they sent us that when they get all the documents, get all the I's dotted and the T's crossed, that we should get back around 47,000 somewhere in that area. Um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I can't see behind the wheel there. Oh, I'm sorry. Last night I asked if, if you don't need the CBD grant, can you go ahead with the KIA loan? Yes, we can go through. Can you go ahead and use that KIA loan for your fixing up stuff and you have to wait till next year to reapply for that CBD grant? Yeah. Get that both um, we're trying to get it go through this year because if we accept the KIA loan right now, then next year we're out of the run for the CDB because it has to be done at the same time, to my knowledge, the way they talk, and it has to be cooperatively done. And uh, so if we go on to do the KIA, we're in for $2 million. It's like $1,987,000, so $2 million. And would the payment start now that you go through? Got that grant now, but you didn't get the grant. You get that well, money, or what? Um, it's all tied together. It's all tied together. But they can't. That's what I'm saying. They can't really give us numbers unless we take and uh, accept the proposal to let them do it because they haven't started on anything. Because they're not going to start, and if we're not going to, you know, want to do it because they've got apparently a whole ton of paperwork they've got to get started and get on. And uh, so this here is just an approval saying, okay, yeah, go on, start your paperwork, and it's all contingent on the, the, the things that we got to get done. And if it comes up to when KIA comes up with a loan, we still don't have to accept it. Oh, that's what I was getting with y'all to have that money set in yeah. that account, paying money. Now, no, we we can we can kill the loan at any time. If we if we lose the CDBG, um, if something comes up and we can't, you know, we don't feel that we can't, we can kill the the loan at any time. And we do not have to accept the money. That's a whole other process. When that gets done, then we have a whole bunch of paperwork. We'll probably have to have another meeting with KIA and just sit there all day signing paperwork. Uh, but as of right now, they're willing. They're We've got the loan as of right now, but they need to start the, pro the paperwork process. So that's what this is for, is saying, yeah, go on and start it, and we'll see what happens. So any more questions about it? As long as we're not hooked yes. at this point. We're not, we're not obligated or in not any way, shape, or form. But uh, comes up next year, if cities have their ducks in a row, it'll just be signature time. Yeah, well, the two things next year, they cannot guarantee that the money will be there, right. and they cannot guarantee the percentage rate. Well, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the proposal and move forward. Yeah, because maybe we'll get an audit out of it. It's just a barn all this half a million. I know if it is. It, um, believe me, we're stopped every direction we turn. Every just, minute we try to take these off. It's connected with this uh, million dollars. It's connected with it, yes. Yeah, yeah okay. So you make right. a motion. All in favor? All opposed? Mr. Green is opposed. Motion passes. All right, let's see the expense budget. Uh, now the, we move on to Trimble County Historical Society, Miss Hilda Parrish, and a believe, young lady with her. If y'all would like to come up here and talk to the commissioners. Come on up here. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Walk up there by Ms. Jane. Okay. Um, I'm Jenny Hackney. I'm the Historical Society. I'm the Secretary of Co Treasurer. And I have a. The Trimble County Historical Society had its beginning early in 1977 when Clara Scott, Lola Stark, and Donna Stark were in the upper room of the Cardinal Hills Golf Course. To discuss the possibility of beginning a group to the Tribal County Historical Society. The object of this group was to be the preservation of Tribal County records. The first meeting was held in the Tribal County Library in May of 77, 
Ms. Irene Long filed an application for a charter in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, issued a certificate of incorporation on August 21st, 1978. Since that time, this society has published over 30 books on the beginning years of Trimble County and the first and the two major cities, Milton and Bedford. Many of those original records have been lost to us, or in the case of the first list of county taxpayers, and more importantly, the first citizens of Trimble County. The list of uh, records were donated to the University of Eastern Kentucky. We have learned they are being stored in boxes in the library basement, as they have not really, as they have really no need for them. Let's not let this happen again. The society also organized the county's birthday party for their 150th year. In recent years, we have given honor to one of our own, Henry Clay Morrison, who became a circuit writer evangelist and twice president of Ashbury College and founder of their theological seminary. We've organized the Veterans Memorial Garden and after being granted a parcel of land in the Bedford Cemetery by the city of Bedford, we are setting memorial stones to honor the military veterans who are buried elsewhere or do not have a known headstone at their grave. In 2017, we were granted custody of the old stone jail <laughs> nearly 32 years after the Trimble County Fiscal Court declared it as custody. We have documentation of things that were there, that were, and we are striving to recreate that time. We want to be part of moving Trimble County forward, but to do so, we must remember our past. Therefore, we come to you for assistance. We are asking for $500 to help get the stone jail ready for tourists touring during upcoming activities. Many requests have been made to tour the jail, and we would like to show it with pride. We are continuing our quest to clean neglected cemeteries and add to the 29 more stones we have set in the county, neighboring counties and neighboring states. Won't you help us be known for more than the only county in the United States named Trimble? Do I have any questions or do I need any? Does anybody have any questions for her? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so I mean, what do you what do you ladies need with your? Uh, for the jail, we need to electrify it, we need to clean it, we need to paint it on the inside, and paint the outside. Might be a good thing in the future. <laughs> When you come across my name, go around and, and do what the last year got to do. Because it's in there. Um, as far as the goes, we are doing that. And uh, actually, the VA will pay for a certain amount of stones if proper documentation. Um, how much are you looking looking for? We're looking for five more. Yeah, that would be our problem. I'll make a motion. A second. Yes, be good. I can hear you. I'll make a motion there you go. for us to donate five hundred dollars. We have a second. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Only if it's going to be a dirt bag. We'll put a new bed in there. Here's my name. Give me the model. All right. Uh, now we will move on in presentation by Miss Jennifer here. It's not really a presentation. I'm just uh -huh. asking. Uh, we got paint samples and we got prices. Yeah. <laughs> what and are you laughing at? Because her lean in had this out. Let me see. Which one was it? They, I walked up to the window and they had it out looking at it. And they said, oh, I like that. So I, I thought it was makeup. 
Mm-hmm. And we answered, yeah, you can get about a five-gallon bucket. I said, well, let's make up you and you. <laughs> they know this is dance. I thought we'd make up a five-gallon bucket. <laughs> so we've got Colin McDonald. Let me show you the colors that we picked out. We've got that in the meeting room, in the hallway, and this turned it in white. And then we're going to do old black and white big photos of Bedford to hang on the wall. This will be the rec room back here, the walls, also trimmed in white. This is the trim. Are you talking about painting the whole thing? It's going to, it's, yes, we're going to paint everything but the gym. But the gym? But the gym, yeah. In my office too? Yes, here is the color for the bathrooms, both men and women's. Purple? It's not purple. It's purple. It's purple. It's ash violet. That's purple. Look okay, at it now. It's hot pink now. Come on. That is pretty. With the, uh, the baseboard already left the way it is. It's just that the men or the women's bathroom, right? That's no, not we both. Uh, right. It doesn't have to be 100 cents up. Yeah, I don't like it. I thought it was pretty. I don't care. It's something, it is pretty, but. It's something neutral. It looks much better than this. Something might get the And then the kitchen. Pretty quick. Work. I like that. And it also trimmed in white with that trim would be very, very pretty. Wouldn't that make it awful dark in there with those dark colors so? No, I don't think so. Not the floor. You want some kind of light so they're, you know, they're all they're light except in. for this one. Get that dark color and it makes it dark. And mm-hmm. then the hallways will be the same as in here. Down the hallways will be the same as in here. And then our office. My office will be not purple. <laughs> oh no. This yellow. Yellow and blue striped. I've got a light in there. Yeah. Will be the yellow. yellow. And then Hilda's grandson, son. son, come in and said it'd be about 20 gallons to paint the building. So we've got prices on. All together, we're probably looking at about maybe five, five fifty on paint. And then you add in another hundred, two hundred dollars for the rollers, and then the paint and or the tape and then the plastic. So you're looking at about seven hundred dollars maybe. And then yeah. me and Leanne are willing to what's, do it. What's wrong with this? It's old. It's old. I know, but it still pay, looks good. I know, but people pay it yeah, yeah, looks good. Yeah, we got yeah, a modern house. Yeah. There's yeah. big holes in the hallway. I mean, we're going to it seems pretty good, good buddy. And do everything. We're going to do the work. <laughs> It'll be. Can we do yellow in the you kitchen? You don't feel better than you do yet. That dark color in the bathroom. <laughs> yes. I like yellow. I know. We, I want purple in the room. Well, then we can do purple. In the <laughs> we can switch it around. It doesn't have to be that. I, this was just kind of an idea. But I like I really, the grays. I really like the grays. Gray's and then I like the yellow color. in the office here. So you don't like the bathroom. I like that color. So you want something else? I'm not sure it's needful enough. Okay. I just it is. Okay. Okay. We'll find something else for the bathroom. Or like a bedroom color. But you, or like you could use the gray in the bathroom too. I don't the dark gray. Okay. But you like the kitchen? The kitchen like is okay. It. Okay. So thinking about seven, about seven, eight hundred dollars. Me and Leanne's going to do the work. We're going to get kids in here to help. We're going to come in on some Saturdays and do it. We're going to stay out on Wednesdays. Y'all take care of that. I don't think the coat and the paints and the. I just think it needs a refreshing. There's a bunch of holes. The kids need to be modernized. It's, it's yes. drab and we'll just old looking. Our, we'll right, we have to paint everything every few years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been over 15 years of this building. We was digging yeah. through the file cabinet and found the swatches in the file cabinet. Uh-huh. So you're going to paint the trim? I don't know. It's, I'm going to try to get, but like up there, you see that? We'll do that like a white. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if we'll do that around except to you all. Or around the doors. Around the white. doors and then around those doors will be white. If y'all want to leave the brown, we can leave the brown, but it's all scuffed and yeah. just... Thank who's, y'all. Y'all do. who's done the work? Me and Leanne. And we'll have kids come in to help. Um, the, me and Leanne will do the majority of the work. I'm all for it. That right, sounds good. All right. Can I get a motion to approve that? Second. Motion. I'll second it. Um, all in favor? Raise your hand. Depends on when you do it. I may come up to the level ground. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm not getting on a ladder up there at the time. Just bring your big magnifying glass. Me and Leanne will do all that. We're gonna tape everything off, and we're testing when we're gonna have kids. Hopefully, some of the kids beta club, some of the kids from school. We kind of do just the ground level work part. Uh, but I don't want a bunch of kids running around. How much tape do you think you're doing? Twenty hours. Yeah, because I've got the uh, high school principal asked me if we could get some work that we could use some kids for. Oh yeah. Co-oping for the summer, for co-oping, and uh, I was waiting on Jennifer to get this together because that would be a good co-op project for the kids from high school to paint. I mean, I just don't want a lot of kids running around and yeah. paint just everywhere. So, so it'll, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be well monitored and... Uh, I can go over and paint that wall right there at five feet that wall and it'll be paint on the courthouse. Yeah, we don't want that. So. Maybe like two at a time. Yeah. Two come this day, two come this yeah. day, two come this day. And then yeah. me and Liam go to the ladders and do the top part. You have a scaffolding, right? You said with the borrow. I have a lift. A lift. Does better. it come in the house? Or come in the house? Come inside? We do. <laughs> we, do. Yeah. we have the one in the gym, but how do you get it through the door? Do it come apart? Pop that bar and drive it through? No, the one that's in the gym. Oh, that'd be good. Huh? That, I said, there, there, she's been in the gym. I, I got in there. Uh, that's it? That's theirs? That's in the gym? No, that, theirs has been in the gym. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I can hear it on this one. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know if it's proper time or not, but uh, did you find anything about those lights? Uh, in the gym we got to complain about safety um, no i have not found anything in that book yet to quarter that shows them lights uh well we have that guy that's doing that the lg thing to do the lightsabers well it, it's not really the lights it's the cover the of us. well he'll go to there and install all new lights if they do the project but uh, no, the, those big round lights in the gym where the kids had busted them. Balls up the balls are they're, they're they're broken, broken, they're falling on the in the gym. Everywhere. Pound class, when they're down on the ground, they they got that glass in their hands. It's a safety hazard. I mean, in fact, probably hard to look like taking gloves off because they have a very light rather than what there is right now. Because yeah. uh, the answer is set up all the time. We see it all the time. We're uh, on the balls up and hitting it. Look at getting new globes, then they make them cages that go around them where you can't, can't hit them. Right. They have the cages in them. No, they don't. They none of them got a cage over them. Okay, that's looking at That's why we're getting busted, because there ain't no cages on them. They might not touch the glass, but they might knock the light out, but they won't touch the glass. Because it's that glass, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's just old and dry rotted, deteriorating, just crumbling. So that's, I guess that's something okay. to think about for another day. All right, uh, through the painting, uh, now the city clerk needs a new chair. She's rolling around in her own and office floor. Is it really the chair if you just fell out of it? Yes, <laughs> because I'm telling you, if you don't ever sit in it, you lean sideways. Yeah, because oh, you can get on it and sit. I was there and watched her one day, and the whole chair was leaning up sideways with her. Well, she, and when I went to school, I told you get that chair. It's not what you're doing. I asked her where she got that chair. I know she didn't want to bend over like that. She said, no, it's broke. And I have to, I have to go in so it doesn't feel too comfortable sitting there. It looks very obvious. It is. It's just where it leans. Yeah. I like that I'm waiting to catch her rolling around on the floor and then we'll get some pictures. I was laying on the floor when my chair flipped out from underneath of me. <laughs> I know that one day you come in, he's all stoned up, moving so you fall off the chair. Yeah. Long, yeah, as long as, you know, it's it's a decent chair. chair. Go ahead. Don't spend $500 on it. I'll chair. tell you, the best place in the world I found to buy chairs is at Restore Center down in uh, uh, Louisville, down by uh, Taylorsville Road. There's a Restore place there, man. They have almost brand new office chairs. They had 10 of them. I'd love to have the money to get them to put in for our meetings. They had 10 of them down there, 25 bucks a piece, look brand new. Mm -hmm. um, we bought one for a boy. They had them on sale one day, trying to get rid of some of them, dollar a piece. They look brand new. That's why we're at first and that. Yeah. Find yeah. But they've got a whole section of just chairs, I mean, office chairs, and really nice looking chairs. Yeah. Which is basically good. Yeah. yeah. 
I wonder if the Habitat for Humanity in Madison has them. Probably not. Well, they have them. We go to that one too, but they're outside in like a garage and they're all piled up and out and laying on dirt and stuff. The one down there at Taylorville Road, it's a beautiful store, nice, clean. I'm not trying to take it out of that one usually. Well, I took the idea of bringing it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to get a new chair. I'll second. Yeah. I'll second. Uh, I'll second. We've got a stipulation on, uh, on cost. What Less is than it? 200. 200? Yeah. Will I get praise if I get it under cheaper? You'll get praise. Okay. Because surely, to goodness, you're not going to pick out a $200 chair. So you get $200. Hey, I get $200 here. Let's go. Hey, I was thinking $5,000 on the generator. I ain't getting nothing. You got to slap on the back. Well, you might want to check with these people. Structure surplus, they've got thousands and thousands of well, we chairs. But for you, they've got chairs. they got office furniture out the bazooka. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jimmy just want to go back first. Oh, y'all go back first. I don't want to. <laughs> All right, so we had motion and second. All in favor with the $200 limit? Aye. And motion passes. All right, next thing is uh, renewing Joanne Pitch's contract with us as our city attorney. Do, do I, do you read this or do I read this? We're just going to see that I can. <coughs> I, I just feel weird. Resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into contract for legal services for the city of Bedford, whereas in the city of, the, is the duty of the city commission to retain legal counsel, and whereas it's, it has been determined that a contract between Joe and Pitch and the city of Bedford is necessary, now therefore be resolved by the city of Bedford that the mayor is authorized to enter into a contract for legal services for the city of Bedford with Joe and Pitch, to extend from June 30, 2019 to June 30, 2021. After a reading, after a reading in full on the 18th day of June 2019, and a motion by Tammy, second by uh, Will, yeah. and this has to be voice votes as yep. y'all uh, done. Yes. Girl, we got to do voice vote. Gary Johnson. Yes. Yes. Mr. Green. Will. Yes. Tammy. Yes. So five yes. yes. Yes, for me also. You eat for another year. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you'll be around a while. <laughs> you know, I thought it was pipe. No, yeah, it's pitch. It's a little Oh, okay. Pitch. I thought it was Kaczynski or something yeah. like that, but Andy kept telling me. Right, right. Well, that's my maiden name. What is? Kaczynski. As in Ted? <laughs> Kaczynski. <laughs> Um, no, it's uh, on Facebook. Okay. All right. Um, next is in line is uh, I will turn this over because I don't know nothing about it. Tammy and Will, I think, have been oh. talking about it on the fire alarm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a motion to read it. Can I get a motion to read it? Uh, yes. Yes. Can we get a second? I'll second it. You, know, you, it, you want to read it? You want me to? You or you want to explain it? Or mm -hmm. go ahead and read it, and then I okay, can explain a little more about it. Are you supposed to read it? Or? It, it's fine for you guys to read it if you want to kind of explain it a little bit more. I don't know if you have to read it all or if you want to summarize it. Do you want to tell us what it's about? Yeah. Good. Oh, okay. Um, the Fire Code 2012 edition, the City of Bedford values the safety of its citizens and whereas the NFPA 1 Fire Code 2012 edition in the documents listed in Chapter 2 of that code prescribe regulations governing conditions hazardous to life and property for fire explosion and provide for the issuance of permits and collection fees. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Commission of the City of Bedford as follows. The NFPA 1 Fire Code 2012 edition and documents adopted by Chapter 2, three copies of which are on file and are open to inspection by the public in the office of the City Clerk of the City of Bedford, hereby adopted and incorporated into this ordinance 
as fully as if set out at length herein. And from the date on which this ordinance shall take effect, the provisions thereof shall be controlling within the limits of the city of Bedford. And the same are hereby adopted as a code of the city of Bedford for the purpose of prescribing regulations governing conditions hazardous to lives and property from fire explosions and providing for assur assurance of permits and collection fees. Any person who shall violate any provision of this code or hereby adopted or failed to comply with therewith or who shall violate or fail to comply with any order made thereunder or who shall build in violation of any detailed statement of specifications or plans submitted and approved thereunder. Am I, did I read that twice? No. In accordance with any certificate or permit issued thereunder and from which no appeal has been taken or who shall fail to comply with such an order as affirmed or modified by the court of the component jurisdiction within the time fixed herein shall severely, severally for each and every violation and non-compliance respectively be guilty of not more than whatever you guys decide. Right. Or by imprisonment for not less than so many days, not more than so many days, or by both such fine and imprisonment. The imposition of one penalty for any violation shall not excuse the violation or permit it to continue and all such persons shall be required to correct or remedy such violations or defect within a reasonable time. And when not otherwise specified, the application of the above penalty shall not be held to prevent enforced removal of prohibited conditions. Each day that prohibited conditions maintained shall constitute a separate offense. The ordinance number, of, and we'll fill that in, of the city of Bedford, an ordinance adopting the fire code and all other ordinance or parts of ordinance in conflict herewith are hereby repealed. That if any section, subsection, sentence, clause, or phrase of this ordinance is for any reason held to be invalid or unconstitutional, such decision shall not affect the validity or constitutionality of the remaining portions of this ordinance. The City Commissioner Bedford hereby declares that it would have passed this ordinance and each section, section, subsection, clause, or phrase hereof, irrespective of the fact that any one of the more sections, sentences, clauses, and phrases be declared unconstitutional. That the City Clerk is hereby ordered and directed to cause this ordinance to be published. That this ordinance and the rules, regulations, provisions, requirements, orders, and matters established and adopted hereby shall take effect and be in full force and effect in 90 days after the date of its final passage and adoption. So it's got to do with inhabitable structures that are, go ahead, Will. It allows the fire department to enforce fire code inside the city limits uh, with businesses, um, residences that uh, have more than four uh, residential living residences connected such as apartment complexes um, and uh, it, it allows us to go in and do inspections uh, for the ABC uh, annually where we haven't been we've been doing the inspections but it's not we haven't had a ordinance to support that uh, how come we do had never had an ordinance I have no idea and is this the most recent one with 2012 edition yes sir so if, say for example, the house that caught, a house caught on fire that sat there for a year and inhabited, yes. the fire department can go in and say, this is uninhabitable, condemned, it needs... Okay, yeah. next question on this. Um, I, I just know what I've been told with dealing with the code enforcement and stuff, that we are not licensed structural experts and we are not allowed to say anything about structural beings. No. So... Will this automatically give you all the right to do this? I mean, is there going um, to be training there, or are we going to have to pay there for training? Are, no. The fire department sends their own people to uh, inspection school. Uh, there are six inspectors already with the Bedford Fire Department. Um, you have to go through, there's two levels. Um, there's a level one and a level two inspector. Um, all you do is make sure that your exit signs are working, that the fire alarms are correct, the smoke, smoke detectors, detectors are right. I mean, there has to be certain things. And then with uninhabitable uh, places, 
um, if, if there is a fire and we make entry into there, uh, we can take and rule it as structural damage and take it off and then the city has to deal with that. But you can only do that if there's a fire involved? If there is a fire involved um, and if there is more than four residences connected. Okay. So it doesn't count if it's a single structure and there's a fire? If there is a single structure and there is a fire, you can. If there is not a fire and it is a single residence, we can't do anything with that. What about burning brush, trash, uh, and far out? That, that's, you can't burn any trash, but can't you're allowed to burn limbs. Can't burn anything in the city? Um, you can, just you can't burn trash. You can't burn garbage. You, you can burn trees and brush. Lands, if you got a brush. Correct. Yes. Brush and stuff like that. Yes. Okay. So this will at least give us a an option that if we have situations arise like they have in the past where there's a burnt structure that is not being taken care of or not nothing's being done to clean it up or repair it. It's a hazard to health and well-being. Would this be um, paid positions? No. Look, I mean, the reason I'm asking is because when I was doing the planning and zoning, they was yeah. talking about building inspectors and said no. Trimble County cannot afford a building inspector. No, we, we these are fire inspectors only. They use strictly the NFPA manual. They follow it to the, guy, the, the guideline on it. Um, other than that. So they're paid by the state? No, so much. they are completely volunteer. Okay, I just had a couple questions. I mean, I just, that's why I want y'all to explain it because I talked to y'all and y'all said we'll just wait and we'll explain it. The, uh, but thanks for reading all that, Tammy. <laughs> the, uh, the big issue that I have right now is annually we have to do a fire inspection for any place that's selling alcohol. There's no ordinance in the city allowing us to do so. This is the ordinance that lets us enforce fire code for alcohol sales. So alcohol, you can just walk in there and look for code violations, or you have to wait for a fire? We can walk in there and look for code violations, but they are annually, they are required to be inspected annually. My, uh, my next question, which is going to be a major problem, are you going to be one of the inspectors? I am an inspector, but no, there's six other, there's five other people. Yeah, because with you being on the commission, um, I don't think you need to be involved whatsoever in any way with these inspections. But the inspection's going to be under your direction, being a part chief. Yeah. As in, I tell them they have. I'm saying somebody can say you weren't too nasty. Well, that, mm -hmm. I would tell them they have to inspect this building, this building, and this building because it is this time of the year, and they require their annual ABC inspections. After that, it's it's completely on them. I walk away. Well, it's like joint commission. I mean, the survey's a hospital. Uh, the CEO is not responsible for making sure that the pharmacy does their inspections and the nursing stations and the drug center. You know? Yeah. It's got to be done. Yeah. But it doesn't make the CEO responsible. Well, I understand that the thing I'm worried about with him being on the commission. As long have, as he doesn't yeah, physically do it himself. Yeah, we come we have somebody come in here raising hell with us. They want something done, blah, blah, and they're fighting with us and fighting. We say no. And then a week later, a fireman shows up to inspect his property. You know, the afraid we're going to get into a lawsuit with retaliation or something like well, that. Well, if it's a requirement yearly that those yeah. structures are uh, inspected, yeah. I mean, that's not, that's no, a I, state Yeah, law. I understand. I just, it just scares me that we might be working with the line that might get yeah, us. might cut us to slack. <laughs> well, we can discuss this with that Courtney, too. Maybe that Courtney Straw. I don't know if we want to, you know, we can wait until the um, the ethics meeting and just verify with her that they're, you know, is in anything. I mean, I'm fine. I just had some questions. I just wanted to make sure. Because yeah. I'm no legal expert and I just don't want to get us caught up in a mess. Uh, all right. Uh, um, 
take a voice vote on whether you want to approve this or not. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is first reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's first reading. Never mind. I was thinking this was second. So this is first reading. Okay. Next thing, move on to annexation ordinance. And I asked Jennifer to put this on. Um, the the thing that I, you know, we want to get this done, and I told Joe that. Uh, the Secretary of State's office wants all this paperwork in the 1st of September in order to get this done by the end of the year um, for the 2012 cen 2020 census. So the thing is, the first thing that we have to do is all, all property that we want to annex, we have to have surveyed. And um, so I didn't, like, I know that there was someone that we were using for surveyors, but um, maybe that person wouldn't be the person we use here but what i need to know or what we need to know to to get this started is find a surveyor we need an estimate and we need you guys to um you know approve that expenditure i have contacted the surveyor that was highly recommended the guy madison um, i have actually i've contacted him twice about a month apart and they, the first time, the lady told me the owner was out, she would give it to him. I waited a month, nothing, I called the guy back. He said he looked for the information, he couldn't find it, so he took the information again. And he said, he don't care what surveyor you go to right now, there's a two month wait before they can do anything. He said, everybody is backed up. He said, it's a hot item right now, surveyors. And um, he said, so it's gonna be at least two months. He said, but since, so I waited a month because this lady didn't give him the information that he would try to talk to the owner and see if maybe they could get us in a little quicker and uh, to come over and give us an estimate on it. So that would be great. Be good. I just wonder why are we surveying people that are already on the suit? No. Because, no, no. This is annexation into the city. Uh, these four properties were start in well, it. Well, the places I went, they're on Sierra, they're all in the city, so. Oh no, you're talking about conservative. No, this had to do, don't have nothing to do with that. This has I mean, absolutely have, nothing to do with No, this is strictly for annexation properties yeah. into the city, annexing. Um, and what happened was they started the annexation out here on four houses, I think it was. Um, they got surveys, they got the paperwork all done up, and the paperwork never was filed at the courthouse, and it never was sent to Secretary of State. Uh, yeah, I know, I want to. And uh, so now, trying to go back through and redo them, the state said those surveys have expired and it has right. to be resurveyed. Right. Oh. Everything has to be redone. As long as I say if it gets a wall in my bed, Don't those four properties right? have their own surveys when they bought the place? Um, I would say if they bought it, they probably had the, the survey there. I don't know if they would have it. Yeah. You know, I don't know if we can go off that or not. I just know yeah. what Secretary of State said. I, mean, I can call her as the Secretary of State. When you get one, you can be last forever. Yeah. But yeah, I had the idea that that wasn't a thing. But let me um, let me call her. I'll do it tomorrow and, and we'll find out. Uh, they probably won't take their property survey because most properties are. Part of that property is in the city, part of it's not in the city. Uh, so it's probably going to be a different survey as to what it is. Well, what do you mean? Do you need a motion to do something? Um, no, well, she just wanted to bring it up on how you wanted to go about this. So if we were going to get surveys to annex, if there's some other areas that we want to go ahead and annex, yeah. I know an area thing. that I do need, it all. I know an area I've been told I haven't been able to catch the man, but uh, two businesses that want in bad, and it's the library and Poppy. Right. Right. Yes. But yes. I can't catch Mr. Sandusky out there to ask him face to face um, if he's wanting to do it. Seven thirty every morning. Is annexation? I ain't. <laughs> is it annexation? Uh, is it uh, only the property owners <coughs> will to be annexed, or can we just decide? No, you got to get permission. You got to get permission from them. Um, you can't just overrun them and say they're going to be in the city. Um, you have to get permission from them. You were saying last night that the map of the annexed city 
on the state level of total carry in anything like ours. No, um, it's, it's, it's there's a big discrepancy on what the state says. Yeah, I don't think I've got the map on my phone. So, how right. can that be? Because that's what was filed with the Secretary of State. Right. See, but the what secret they have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which they Isn't that have. legal and binding? What the Secretary of State has is what legal and binding. Yeah, they said you had to ask a secretary of state to show you my office. I have two maps and it shows two different things. If that's the case. Well, why can't we go by the one that's legal and binding instead so of. That's the one we're going by, and it is so screwed up. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. one that they have, uh, we have had past commissions and present commissions. It's not even necessary. Yeah, I thought, according to that, what is No, we want to trade by the Yes. Yeah. 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 That one map we got shows you're going out of town, yeah. city living stops, and then it jumps over and picks back up at signature health care out there. Yeah. And it shows signature health care is in city limits, yeah. but there's a gap in between them, and that can't happen. It has right. to be contentious. You have to yeah. get each property yeah. going out. And uh, so I, mean, I was confused. Every map I had it had showed a different thing, so I called Secretary of State. They said, if it does not say Secretary of State on there, it is not a legal map. So mm -hmm. we're trying to get this straightened up because out here these apartments behind the doctor's office, uh, according to our map, the city limits go straight through their parking lot. The front half is in city limits, the back half is, in, is out of city limits. <coughs> but all that has right. to be surveyed. Right. I'm going to do it all at one time. Who wants right. to in, you know, yeah. Yeah. It all but, means. Um, but then you would have to go out and get permission from people. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, that's what I told Joy. I mean, she's got these started as soon as she get a chance. I want her to go have poppies, library, start working. Because I know well, the library are, wants it. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, Tommy's, I know the library. He already told me he wants it. Yeah, I haven't been able to catch him to get face to face, yes or no. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be here at 7:30 in the morning, Jim. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, we're trying to get this straightened up, so there's going to be a lot of mess with surveying. Yeah. There should be some big calls for surveying. The more we want surveyed, the more it's going to cost us. Right. That's the other thing. So and which the public and library may be new enough that their surveys may work. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we'll just have to cross that bridge when we come to it. I just know they said the D surveys had they had uh, expired and they needed new surveys. <coughs> so that's all I was. Yeah, just I'm trying to get this one guy. If he don't contact me back now, I'm going to try something else. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, is there anything else on the annexation? Any questions? Mr. Green made motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Uh -huh. Thank you, gentlemen, ladies, very much.